Hey there, and welcome to The Cozy Corner, a podcast about all things cozy. Join us as we dive into the world of film and TV, a little true crime and spooky time, food reviews, and talk to some special guests too. So get cozy, grab some snacks, and settle in, because we're about to begin. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Cozy Corner. My name's Emily, and today I'm going to be doing a review on Domino Day. It's a new TV series and I've got some things to say about it. But before we dive in, for any new listeners, I just wanted to say that thank you so much for joining, first of all. And in case you're not sure what this podcast is about quite yet, well, we do a few different types of episodes. We do True Crime and Spooky Time, where I talk about true crime cases, usually in Liverpool, or some spooky stories, which you can go check out. I believe there's two episodes up about those. Or we do film and TV reviews, sometimes some food reviews, some story times, maybe some Marvel episodes as well, woven throughout. I also do some guest interviews as well. We've got quite a few of those up at the moment. And any little bits that we like in between. So it's kind of anything that we're passionate about, we talk about. And I say we... I do usually have a co-host, but unfortunately Abby is unwell at the moment. She's doing much better now, and she's hoping to return to the podcast soon. So let's send all of our well wishes to Abby, and hopefully she'll be back soon, and we will be able to get back to our usual podcast host setup. Um, But for now, we're going to be diving into a review about Domino Day. So for those who might not be too familiar with it, first of all, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen it, go watch it, pause this, go watch it, enjoy it, or don't, come back, and then, you know, we can can talk about it, but I don't want to be spoiling it, so don't make me spoil it, okay? Um, Now that's out the way, let's get into the summary first of all. So, the synopsis is that this show is set in Manchester. Domino Day is the story of Domino, a young woman with the power to feed on the life force of unsuspecting men that she meets on dating apps. Strangely enough, this appears to not be a normal behaviour by the standards of witches, and soon there's a coven on her trail trying to figure out what she's up to. And to make things worse, Domino's evil ex Silas is back in town and looking to settle scores. So it really sets up this kind of this drama and and there's a lot going on. Like there is quite a bit going on. And I really, really, really wanted to love this series. But it just felt like it fell a bit short. Now, I I will say, there are some really good parts of the show. And I did think that he did really well with some aspects. But it just kind of fell short in, in many others. And I feel like it had a lot of potential. It could have been really good. But there was just a lot of pitfalls that it did fall down. It seemed like this show was really trying to be the next Vampire Diaries or Supernatural but it just wasn't hitting the spot it just didn't quite get there it felt too much of a copycat and then what was actually original wasn't really explained very well so the storyline throughout felt quite messy and all over the place and it seemed to really rely on sex scenes to to drive the narrative forward or some kind of like sexy scenes, you know, to really draw the audience in and set the tone instead of delivering the plot. And I felt like the plot was very trimmed down, like it was meant to be much longer and deeper and and have more depth to it than what it ended up being. So the show gave us six 45-minute episodes, well, 45-minute-ish episodes, And it gave the impression that it could have actually been a lot longer to accommodate more of the rich storyline. 
that it alludes to, we don't really get to dive in. It just kind of gives the bare minimum of the storyline, which I was upset about because I could see the potential in this story. I could see what it was trying to be and what it was trying to achieve. And it could have. It could have if it was allowed to. I do think in this somewhere there's a really great story. It just wasn't allowed to shine. I feel like it was really cut short. Maybe I've got that wrong. But that's just what it's given to me. That That's what I feel when I've watched it. Many of the characters throughout this. I just didn't feel they were really fully developed. I don't mean to be so negative about this. But I just felt like there was a lot. Where it, it just didn't live up to its potential of this show. Like it could have been incredible. But it, there was just so many pitfalls. So... These characters that we we do meet, obviously we're first introduced to Domino. And because she is quite a developed character, we do get the sense that we're able to connect to her. I feel like there could have been a bit more development there. But overall, we did get to have that connection and understand her a bit more. Understand what some of her own motives are and what kind of drives her and stuff like that. Like We got an insight into that which I liked. Um, but many of the other characters we didn't get that with even some of the other main characters where they could have been more developed so that that was a shame and that meant like when they were in danger I didn't really care because I don't know them and every character except, except Domino is actually quite plain and basic and even many of the other women in the covens we got to see some glimpses of their personality, but a lot of it we just didn't get to experience. And I feel like that was a real shame because they all seemed to have very different and unique personalities, and yet we didn't actually get to like fully immerse ourselves in that. They seemed like interesting people, at least it was alluded to that they were really they've got this these deep personalities and yet it wasn't showcased you know like you get the hint especially with um the character who can see people's auras i would have liked to see more scenes from her perspective and also a deeper explanation of her power and how that affects her personally not just how it you know interferes with other people's lives but how does that impact her life and um, what problems has it caused what issues like that would have been interesting to see and then how that has impacted her life and growing up maybe and, and stuff like that I feel like there was a lot more to be explored Um, I thought the main character Domino played by Sienna Kelly was electric on screen she brought such a vibrant presence and that carried the show like she was brilliant i thought she she just kind of leapt off the screen it was brilliant the only character apart from domino that i kind of felt anything for was leon as the show actually spent some time developing him and giving us an insight into his personality and I thought the character Silas, he was quite an interesting evil addition that really should have got a lot more screen time and should have been more explored to explain why he was so evil and hell-bent on becoming the most powerful witch. It was kind of touched on. Like, we, we got to see a little bit of that, but it wasn't enough. I wanted more. Because he, he's supposed to be the main villain here. He is the guy standing in everyone's way. He's tearing down everyone who stands in his way. He's going to get his power no matter what. And he's going to destroy the world by doing it if he has to. But why? Why exactly? We don't get a full explanation. Things are touched on. Motives are kind of a bit implied. 
but we didn't get to see much about his past or anything really about his psyche and why he is the way that he is why is he so obsessed with getting that power and then why I mean we know that his power was taken away from him because he was abusing his power but why did he want to abuse that power why did he want to do evil things with it what was the true motive behind that so I would have really liked to see more dedicated to to him and why he wanted to become like one of the most powerful witches ever and why he was so obsessed with Domino's power that felt like it 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 felt like it was originally something that was going to be explored but then it, it just wasn't maybe it was cut for time I'm not sure but it just it felt like it it could have been something that was more thoroughly looked at and it would have been an interesting addition because he was actually in my opinion the most interesting character in the show domino yeah she's quite interesting and i love the mystery around here but i just feel like silas is one of those characters where it's kind of like from the vampire diaries like klaus and damon Col, like all and elijah those kind of characters where they're constantly striving for something that they can't have they want power because they feel like power is how you navigate this world and i feel like that is such an interesting character trait i love seeing that so i wanted that to be explored more on screen the audience throughout this show was really thrust into the world of witches in modern day manchester but with no real explanation of the world building to lay the ground it did feel like like that was missing really and with no explanation you it it does although it can have mystery and that can be fun it just makes the audience really question things and for me it took me out of it i was like okay but why can that witch do that but this witch can't it's not explained why is it not explained what's the law here like what are the rules you know and it just i kept questioning things and often a great technique in writing and in tv and film can be to drip feed the audience information and i love that usually but i just feel like when we got to the end of the series all of the questions that i had about the world building and about the different rules and the folklore and the magic and all that none of it was really answered so i didn't get the payoff i didn't get the drip feed of information that then leads to the payoff of being oh okay now i understand now it all makes sense that didn't happen so i'm still left not known quite what was going on and perhaps if there's a season two it might be cleared up and it, it might resolve those issues but right now i was more confused when it ended and I did like how it ended. It it was a good ending because it was a bit of a cliffhanger. And I enjoyed that. It was like, oh, is what I think just happened? Or is this something different? Like, you know, it makes you think. And I, I do enjoy that. But it just raised more questions. And I feel like for this kind of series, especially with the amount of of different magical rules and world building that were involved there needed to be more clarity not just like a narrator saying in this world they have this magic and some witches do this some do that not that we don't want that that's boring but it needs to be explained through domino she doesn't really know what she's doing she doesn't understand her power so the coven should be teaching her the coven should be explaining things she should be reading grimoires and 
gaining this knowledge about this magical world and and the powers that she has and although we pick up a few things along the way from what she finds out she it's not really explained fully to her and she still doesn't really know what she is or who she is and neither do we so it just felt like we didn't get that payoff really I just didn't think it was executed as well as it could be. I would have liked to see more of Domino figuring out her powers and struggling with them from a young age with no guidance because she did express that she didn't have any guidance, no one told her. She actually thought that she was the only person with that power. Now, to be fair, she was a Lamia, which... They are extinct from what we know. So she is the only one, as far as we're aware. But she's not the only witch. She She's just the only one of that type of witch. So she grew up believing that she was the only witch in existence. Because she didn't have anyone to tell her, really. And we didn't get much of a backstory. I would have loved to see more backstory to fully explain like who she is and how she's got to where she is. Why she never knew anything about magic and witchcraft and all that. It didn't even need to be linear. We could have found that out in like the last episode, you know what I mean? We could have visited her backstory much further down in the storyline. To give us kind of like a prequel sort of thing. Like, it didn't have to be linear. In fact, I prefer it often when things aren't linear. I like that style. I do prefer non-linear storytelling often because it adds a bit more mystery and it reveals things. It's it's just often better, isn't it? But I felt like with not explaining things, you often just confuse the audience with this sort of thing. And it just felt like either things were cut or things just were never fully explained properly. It would have been a great way to show us a lot of her mistakes as well and how it made her cautious of her own power. So how did she figure out she could do what she does with the, you know, draining the life force from men? How did that come about? When did that first happen? And what what did she do to figure that out? You know, that's what I would have liked to see. And it adds to the development of the character. Seeing how maybe she's accidentally killed someone on her first go. How does that impact a person? Is that why she's so cautious? Was that someone a close friend? You know, we just didn't really get that side of things. And it would have added much more depth to the character and the plot. What I did enjoy though is how they tied in all of the mythology with the series, bringing in in the uh, Greek myth of the Lamia. And this version of a Lamia is a witch instead of a demon. And it offers powers similar to what we know as a succubus. Now within media, we all know the succubus, usually a very beautiful, sexy woman who visits people at night and sucks the life force out of them and can often be described as like a sleep paralysis demon sometimes in mythology so I liked how that was tied in I thought that was done really well I would have preferred to go more in depth with the mythology linked to the magic in this kind of world and maybe even have an episode episode solely dedicated to that to properly go in depth and explain as it kind of just felt like there was more to unpack there and we didn't get to see it so I would have liked that I felt like they did it well but it could have been even better with going more in depth and have like an episode maybe where we're not even with the characters that we know maybe it's back in time like centuries ago when there was Lamia's everywhere like they were maybe like a a rampant problem throughout society and maybe we're seeing the myth or even the creation myth of the Lamia you know 
something like that, I feel I could have really added something special. That could have been really good. Because I enjoyed that. I enjoy seeing how myth and legend can be tied together and thrust into a modern day story. And it worked really seamlessly and I feel like they did do a good job but there was more there. The magic law was good but it did need more development and to give us more of an insight into the rules and the origin because the rules again they're not really explained we don't really know what's going on and that can work but it can only really work if you then later explain things or drip feed the audience strategically to give them the information that they do need to know and allow things to be worked out throughout the series but that didn't happen um, I really like the mysteriousness of the story throughout. Kind of just felt like it was missing something. Like maybe more of an origin story, creation myth, or more of that mythological aspect. And um, what I really wanted to see was more of the magical authority and the elder witches that seemed to govern all of the witches and the covens and dive deeper into that darker undertone of corruption that it was hinting at because we could see that silas's mother who seemed to be in charge or and you know kind of the bad guy in the series um as well as silas himself she had a lot more darker things going on she seemed to be able to govern things and she was the one who instructed domino the lamia to be destroyed and that is what ultimately leads her to capture domino and and begin the whole ritual but i would have liked to see more in depth about that person and and who she is kind of thing like a bit more of her motives because although she expresses that like well if the people who are above here the elders like if they see that you know we caught the last lamia well that'll be good for me But it didn't really seem like that was enough of a motive. It's hinted at that every witch seems to despise Lamias. And it's because Lamias kill people. They suck the life force out of them. But we don't get to see the repercussions of that and how that actually impacted people. I think there would have been more of a connection and more of an impact and more understanding of of why everyone hates the Lamias, if we fully got to see an episode where the Lamias are like destroying everything and killing everyone, then it would it would hit home. Then we would see the loss and the destruction. But we didn't we, we didn't get to see much to do with that. It was all more just hinted at and explained well, briefly explained. And again it's these elements where they could have developed more that really would have made this show incredible. The potential is there. They're just not going for it. But it was a really good move to make it so that Domino was the one who had all of the power and Silas had none. And it kind of hinted as well that he was mainly with her because of her power. Which I thought was really interesting. And it forced him to show his true colours. And reveal his need for power. His craving for power. Even if he wasn't the one wielding it. He wanted to be the one at least in charge of that power. So I enjoyed that relationship between them. And seeing his darker side come out when she wouldn't do what he wanted to do. And ultimately that leading her to express her more darker power that we don't really know fully what happens she can send people somewhere so she did that like a few times and I think like that was I I liked how they kept it a mystery for a while and then revealed where they go I enjoyed that Um, I loved seeing the dynamic of power throughout the show displayed in relationships especially with Silas and his mother She was the one who usually had the upper hand after taking away his power 
when she realised he couldn't be trusted with it because he wanted to do evil things with it. But there's some really interesting writing when the tables are turned and he finally gets his powers back after manipulating his mom into giving them back to him. Um, I thought that that was, that was quite a satisfying moment, even though we're not supposed to root for Silas. There is a part of us where we can see that his mum is just as evil as he is. And although she was right to take his power away, it was still quite a satisfying moment when he got them back. And it was just fun to see him have his power back and be able to do whatever he wants with it and immediately once he gets it back he hates someone so he definitely shouldn't have those powers but it is a fun dynamic to play with in in that narrative seeing how what happens when that kind of power is in the wrong hands and his hands are the wrong hands and the show didn't shy away from dark themes like power struggles, death, murder, sexual assault. I feel like it really did play into that and it it weaved it into the storyline seamlessly. It worked like and it helped explore more of of like tying it in with magic and how magic can lead to these issues as well and I feel like they're all really prominent themes and that was done quite well. One of my favourite things though about this show, what I really, really enjoyed, was the girl gang vibe. The BFF love in this show, it is infectious. I felt like I was part of the coven at some parts, like, I loved it. It was absolutely like, you just felt like, these are my girls, they're my gang, like, they're going to have my back. And you wanted to be a part of it. Like it felt nice and cool. And and just like everyone. Like all of those girls. You can see. They've all got their different powers and all that. And their different abilities. Different personalities. But you could see no matter what. Those girls will always stick together. They will always protect one another. And even though they were cautious about Domino at first, you know, fair enough, she is a Lamia, like, it's dangerous powers and all that. Even though they were cautious and a bit wary, when they accepted her into the coven, they were like, we're riding, ride or die, like, this is it. We are sticking together. We've got your back, you've got our back, that's how it is. And they were just all so nice to each other. I mean, there was other parts... In, in their relationships where people were kind of button heads a bit. But that's to be expected in any group. And I liked how they didn't shy away from that. You know, they brought up about how sometimes, especially in, like, girl groups that I've got quite a few members in, not everyone's going to get along all of the time. And there are some people who clash. But often... That's just how friendships are. That's the realism of friendship groups. So I enjoyed that. It was interesting to see how like the explored female friendships and the different dynamics they create. And especially when someone new joins. Overall, I think that this show, it's not too bad. It's got all of the right ingredients for an epic supernatural witchy series but it just didn't quite hit the spot it lacked in some areas and you know what if they would have filled in those gaps and developed those characters more expanded the world building this could have been the next epic hit this could have been an incredible supernatural series and that's what i was expecting going into it maybe that's why i'm disappointed because I wanted that so badly, like, I wanted this to be the new witchy series that I loved, like, especially after seeing some series like A Discovery of Witches, you know, Vampire Diaries, stuff like that, like, they were epic, they were amazing, they had so much going on, 
and they worked because of the development and the world building and how much detail it goes into when you cut out the detail it just all falls apart and that was the downfall of the show it could have been so good and i really wanted it to be but it just lacked which is such a shame it really is i think i've said such a shame so many times on this episode but it really was it just it's so sad and i feel like the actors they did a great job they really did like especially um the actress who played domino the actor who played silas and you know the coven witches like that was brilliant they like were captivating they did a great job it was just that it was lacking in some parts with the writing and the world building and that so yeah it could have been amazing but hey i think if they expanded more with the world building and the characters were developed more it could have been and it, if it could have like opted to be a bit more original because there were some similarities to other shows then it could have been great because like i couldn't help but compare it to other shows like vampire diaries buffy charmed the circle it just felt a bit like you know, this has all been done before but if they would have explored the more original aspects, the more unique aspects, like the the folklore, the magic, the world building, then it could have made it really be something unique and just, you know, something that we haven't seen before. It would have set it aside. But it chose to be safe and safe. In this climate of TV and film, safe and boring isn't working now it's not working anymore we need unique we need different we need something that we haven't seen before and this could have been it it kind of felt a bit rushed as well like it could have expanded on so many different elements um and fully flesh out the characters and the lore it had the potential but it just missed the mark in the end so that is my review of domino day Let me know what your thoughts are on the show and if you think it will get a second season. It's a bit too early to say at the moment, but if it does, then they desperately need to expand more on everything to really grip it like the audience and and get them to tune in because I can see how amazing this could be if you just put in all of the effort and the detail i mean you know the devil's in the details <laughs> like you've got to go for it you've got to go all in and just really make this as unique and authentic as possible and the only way to do that is to go more in depth with everything and create something completely unique and it's there you just gotta do it so yeah um if you agree with me or disagree let me know over on our socials links are all in the show notes below hope that you have enjoyed this episode even though i was quite negative i don't mean to be i've just got to give an honest review that's what you've come here for you know don't want to just talk about things that i like all the time otherwise you're probably going to think is she even telling the truth well here we go because this was a little bit of a more negative review even though there were a lot of positive elements to it that I think they still did really great on. So, yeah, I feel like this is probably something that you could watch and be on your phone for. That's, I mean, I was doing that because I got bored. I was scrolling on my phone. So it's a casual watch, I would say. If you like all things witchy, macabre, dark, mysterious, then check it out and see what you think. Maybe your thing completely different to me that's the wonderful thing about tv and film everyone's opinion is going to differ so check it out for yourself and let me know what you think so yeah make sure you subscribe to cozy corner check us out on all the different social links below hit subscribe on the app that you're listening on head over to our youtube channel to check out the video version as well and i will catch you on the next episode Stay cozy.